Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The world is turning its attention to developing the technology platforms required for the commercialization of the fifth generation of mobile communications. Natasha Wendell tells us how this technology is likely to be adopted across developed and developing nations. Hi Natasha. Hi. What is 5G and how will it benefit society? Well, 5G is basically a step up from 4G. Um, it is said to be the next frontier of mobile innovation. The technology that will actually lay the basis for the network society, the internet of everything, in a world where everything that benefits from being connected will be connected. Um, it is said um, through, well, a lot of research has looked into it so far, and it's said that 100 billion devices could be connected on a 5G network. Um, an individual user experience could perhaps reach 10 gigabytes a second. Many companies and organizations are investing in the research and development of 5G networks. What does this entail? Well, a lot of work is going into it at the moment. Um, you'll see mostly European companies are looking at partnering with each other. They're forming organizations to research and develop prototypes for 5G. They're also partnering um, governments and the public sector also partnering, um, looking at METIS, for example. Um, the European Commission has also done a PPP um, that's, that's getting all the companies together in Europe um, to outline what would be the basis for it, the, uh, the standards that would need it, align industry's views on it, and just trying to get it off the ground. Um, the private companies, for instance, um, Huawei has also been looking at it. Ericsson's been looking at it. They're injecting hundreds and millions of dollars into developing prototypes. Er Ericsson, for example, is also um, in partnership with entity Docmo. Um, it will, in 2015, trial a, a 10 gigabit a second prototype in Japan. Um, Huawei is also um, planning in 2017 to demonstrate um, a trial with speeds of up to 50 gigabytes a second. Um, and they, I think, are injecting about $600 million themselves by 2018 to develop it. Huawei has also demonstrated prototypes at the Mobile World Congress in 2011 and 2012 already. So a lot of work is, is going into it. Countries um, like Japan, also set to, uh, Japan and Korea are also set to actually demonstrate at Olympic events in 2018 and 2020. When are the first 5G networks expected to be rolled out and how will this differ between the developed and developing nations? Well, the first commercialization is only expected between 2020 and 2030, but that is only for developed countries who already have a network basis of 2G, 3G, 4G, established. Um, they'll just start rolling it out, commercializing it to their public, um, to all their clients, all the com private companies to their clients. In emerging economies such as Africa, for instance, we're still in the early stages of developing our own networks for 2G, 3G and 4G. Um, we haven't got the capability as yet to roll out 5G. Um, we don't have the incentive to, to invest so significantly in, in 5G networks when we still need to get our basics done. Our infrastructure constraints that obviously make a lot of companies hesitant to roll out something so advanced in, e in emerging economies at the moment. And, but when, our, when the time comes, when, we, when emerging economies have to actually transition to 5G, they're going to have to look at innovative ways of getting this out there, um, obviously because of our infrastructure constraints for the most part. Um, and they need to monetize and generate adequate returns to, to make it viable for them. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.